I just want to give a, a brief word about how I started to experience intercession. My husband and I were awoken one night and we, we couldn't get back to sleep and we felt the urge to do something radical for God. And in our church there was a team of young people. They came to us in the next week and they didn't tell us that they had been in intercession and they asked us if we'd like to join their team that worked full-time in the church, and we said yes. So we joined the team, and the first day we sat down on our chairs in a little circle, and they said we're going to do intercession. We didn't know what intercession was, so for hours we sat there and we did intercession. And the next day we got to the church and they said, we're going to do intercession. And that's all they did. They did intercession. So we learned all about intercession day after day. And out of that intercession came the idea for a coffee bar work for young people. And the youth work went from 20 young people to 120 in the midweek prayer meeting. Lots of things came. A powerful ministry came through just us, but we weren't anything special. We were just doing intercession. And looking back, we saw the most amazing, powerful things in ministry. God just anointed with power through intercession. And we had... Uh, young people getting slain in the spirit, delivered from demons and coming to know the Lord through intercession. Okay, so this is what we did when we got in our group for intercession. To prepare oneself for intercession, make sure that your heart is clean. And one of us would pray this on behalf of the group. Before God, by having given the Holy Spirit time to convict, should there be any unconfessed sin. It's important not to go on until you've dealt with the unconfessed sin. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Psalm 66 verse 18. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139. Then another one of us would do this. We'd acknowledge that we could not really pray without the direction and energy of the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings, and here it is again, groanings, which cannot be uttered. Romans 8 verse 26. Ask God to utterly control you by his Spirit, and somebody else should do this. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5 verse 18. Another person should pray to die to your own imaginations, desires and burdens for what you feel you should pray. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways my ways, says the Lord. Isaiah 55 verse 8 casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 You know, God can speak something new in intercession into your church or into your lives. So you need to praise him. The next step is for somebody to praise him in faith for the remarkable prayer experience you are going to have because he's a remarkable God and will do something consistent with his character. Then as a group, you should be waiting in silent expectancy, in obedience and faith. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John 10 verse 27. And be sure not to move on to the next subject until you feel you've given God sufficient time to discharge all he wants to say to you. This is really just listening to God. Intercession, we're listening to God to see what he's got to say to us. Always have your Bible with you should God want to give you direction or confirmation from it. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. One of you might have a verse, another might have a vision, and another might just have a prayer or a name of a person and when you share it at the time, end of your time of intercession together, then it will fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And then you can go into prayer over each part of the jigsaw puzzle. When God ceases to bring things to mind for prayer, 
finish by praising and thanking him for what he has done. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Romans 11.36 Ask for the fear of the Lord, but then speak out what he gives you. Don't be afraid to keep silent. And incidentally, the most important thing we had during our time of intercession was an intercession book. It had pages and pages of things that God had shown the young people before we joined the team, including the days that they'd prayed that we would join the team. And it had pages and pages of answers to prayer as they kept a record of what God was showing them every day. After you've got your list of things to pray for as a group, and this shouldn't take very long, going through the steps should take no longer than five minutes, but waiting on on God takes longer. We go into spiritual warfare. We're doing battle. We're going to take our position in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it's really important to be aggressive in spiritual warfare, binding and loosing in the heavenlies. Ephesians 2 verse 6. We're tearing down strongholds. And just one brief example of this is we took some young people on an outreach at the Mount. We fasted one day and we climbed up to the top of Mount Monganui and we joined hands around the top and we, in the spirit, prayed and took down the strongholds before we had our outreach. We were all exhausted at the end of it, but we saw over 100 people come to the Lord at that outreach. So it's important, fasting, intercession and praying go hand in hand as spiritual weapons. And this is another really important thing to take protection from the enemy because we're in spiritual battle now. And put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6 verse 11. Realise and state your authority in the Lord Jesus. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10 verse 19. And put on again the whole armour of God, revealed in Ephesians 6 verses 13 to 17. Attack with the weapons, which are the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, his blood, the power of the Spirit, and the sword of the Spirit. Resist Satan. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4 verse 7. Bind the enemy, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16 verse 19. We really need to believe that verse. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods? unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Matthew 12, verse 29. Confess victory through the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Revelation 12, verse 11. Declare verses of victory to give glory to God. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who will tread down our enemies. Psalm 108, verse 13. Intercession topics. One, for leaders and all in authority, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet life in godliness and reverence. 1 Timothy 2, verse 2. We should pray for God's leaders to be appointed and for men in positions of authority to be the men that he would bless us through. Secondly, our immediate family. Third, evangelism and missions. And fourth, those in greatest spiritual darkness and bondage. Practical points. Pray out loud when possible. It helps to keep the thought chain. Fast with your prayers. Allow the Holy Spirit to move through you. Again, the verse about groanings. Travail in prayer. For example, Isaiah 66, verse 8 and 9. Remember to persevere in your prayer as shown in the parable of the persistent friend in Luke 11, 5 to 13. And the intercessor has no vacation from prayer. Isaiah 62 verse 6.